Good evening, fans. On behalf of the Board of Education, Superintendent Dr. Aaron Johnson, Athletic Director Kim Schoen, High School Principal Miss Elise Zip McLaughlin, and the High School Administration, would like to welcome you to Lakeshore Hockey Arena for tonight's varsity hockey game between the Hilton Cadets and your Aronico Eagles. The West Aronico Central School District believes that sportsmanship is a major part of any athletic competition. We are grateful to have you here tonight and encourage enthusiastic participation. Aronico is committed to providing an inclusive environment that values all members of our community. Where they, we therefore ask you support our athletes by keeping your cheering positive and respectful. Individuals engaging in mean spirit speech or behaviors that convey insult, intolerance, or disrespect will be asked to leave the premises. Thank you in advance for being an Eagle fan. A special welcome is extended to all coaches, players, officials, and to all spectators from Hilton and around the point. The starters for the visiting Hilton Cadets. Sophomore defenseman, Phil Fiorella. Senior defenseman, Tyler Moranti. At left wing, eighth grader, Casey Hanrahan. At right wing, freshman, Hunter Hunneman. At center, sophomore, Tanner Smith. So do you want to on and in goal, junior, Aiden Hill. The head coach of home is Chris Montfiletto, assisted by Dave Mesbauer, Joe Petrino, and Joe Interlacina. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media Sports Network proudly welcomes you to Lakeshore Ice Arena for tonight's Section 5 matchup, a Division 1 matchup as the Eagles of Irondequoit to the home team tonight taking on the Cadets of Hilton. Along with Bill Smith, my name is Gene Battaglia. Two young teams we have here tonight. Should be a fun game. we got a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. we got a couple of 8th graders out there. These are two teams that each have, count them, one senior. There's one senior on each of these teams. These are young squads who are learning a lot and their time here on the varsity squads. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see these teams, how they progress, not just this year, but next year and beyond. Here's our national anthem.
course, Hilton in the red. They are the designated visiting team tonight. Ron DeCoy in the home whites. Although, is there really a visiting team tonight? Both these teams uh, call Lakeshore home. This is familiar surroundings for both of these squads. They both play out of this rink. I think they just kind of jumped across the benches there. These two teams, these are also two teams that are familiar with each other a lot. This is the third match of this season already. It is January 6th. These teams have seen each other twice already. These two teams really know each other. They both play out of this rink. They practice near each other. They know each other. It's the third time they've met this year, and it's tough to beat a team three times. Hilton's won the first two, but it is very difficult to beat a team three times. Yeah, Hilton coming in with a record of 4-8. and eight. Ronda Coit looking for their first W of the season. Tonight's starting goaltenders, Joel Reeves, first-year player, getting the call tonight for Ronda Coit. And for Hilton, head coach Chris Maffaletto going with Aiden Hill, the junior, number 31. Aiden Hill last season got a bunch of starts sitting behind a couple of very talented seniors. Now is his time. Reeves over here, the freshman, he's got a lot of starts this year. We got a good goaltending matchup, and uh, Gene, let's go get him. Player to watch for Rondekoy tonight. That's number eight, Samuel Crane. Four goals on the season, leading the team as Rondekoy getting pressured in their own end. Here's the shot. Quick save. No, it goes through. Five hole and Hilton. No. I beg your pardon. I could have sworn that went through. There was celebration. Somehow that came out. Bill, what did you see on that it, play? It looked like it may have been across the line. The official was very adamant, waving the arms, didn't go. It looked at first like Hilton might have had their first one there. But again, the official was right on top of it. And the fans here, not much noise here as... Hilton getting in a change. The cadets along the near side is, that's number eight, Casey Hanrahan. He'll leave it there for number five, Joshua Anson. Long shot, and that'll be frozen by Reeves. And for Reeves, okay, settle down. It didn't go in, and everything's fine. Face up coming up here in the Aronicoida. I think if this puck goes in right here, Reeves might be on edge early. Here it is into the slot. A lot of space there for that Tanner goes, that Smith. That went in. That went in. Break for that the Eagles. That went in. Yep. Tanner Smith, very, very talented sophomore on the Hilton Cadets. I've watched both of these teams a whole bunch this season. Tanner Smith, the last time these two teams played, he was without question the best best player on the ice that night. Didn't end up with a point that night against Aronicoit, but very talented player. Almost pots his first one tonight right there. So as we wait the face-off, it'll be Luke Manley, number 19, to take the draw for the Cadets. Still the opening minute of play here tonight from the Lakeshore Ice Arena. On the far side, Tommy Holve sending it ahead. A little too strong, and that will be an icing. And we'll do this all over again. Landon Bryan on the draw there. He is a very talented freshman. These two rosters littered with freshmen. A couple of eighth graders we're going to see out there. We've already seen Casey Hanrahan from the Cadets, eighth grader. A lot head, of young kids out there. Head coach Mike Semino of the Rondecoid Eagles. As that puck now will go behind the net. And they'll try, try to wheel it around as Velipak will send it ahead. Rondecoid on the break as Landon Bryan... Gets held up at the line as Arondequoit trying to work it in deep. Instead, it'll get deflected out towards center ice. Battle for the puck along the near wall. Is, that'll be backhanded in. That'll allow a chance for a change here. Is coming off the ice will be Aiden Kennedy, number 14. Arondequoit trying to push it ahead. Ryan Fish, number 11, gets laid out. Big hit there coming from number 7, Landon Bryan. And the Arondequoit fans appreciating that clean hit. Coming ahead, that's Henry Velipek. Pass broken up into Rondekoit. In their own end, will regroup. No score here early on. Opening minutes of play. As along the near wall, now going back after it, will be Trent Letcher, number 10. He'll send it over to Patrick Wiza. As Wiza gets tripped up, everybody looking for an arm there. No call. Good, good keep there at the line by Rondekoit. Now it squirts out. As the Eagles now applying some pressure in a big... Shoulder check there is Ganning Driscoll delivering that hit for Hilton. Nice physical play, separate from the puck, but now maybe a chance. Douglas Velipek in the corner, but then getting over there defense Tyson Morante. And a penalty coming up, and this will be against Aronda Coit. As the puck coming over to the near side, Aiden Hill waiting for a chance to get off the ice. Now he's going to come off the ice as play continuing on, and finally Aronda Coit will touch it. Tripping will be the call against the Eagles at 14-20. Yeah, Velipek got in there, got a little too busy with the, the stick. 
Penalty on the right boy. Douglas Hillhack, two minutes for tripping. Hilton, Hil Hilton will go to the power play here. Hilton's last game, Tuesday against Fairport. Hilton, this very young team, played a very senior-laden Fairport team. Really, really tight, really well. Two power play goals that night. We'll see if the cadets can do it here. <laughs> the penalty was on Velipek, and I don't think I've ever seen it. Tyler Wallner went over. He thought the penalty was on him. So Wallner actually went over to the box. They're like, no, 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 penalty's not on you. So first power play for either team. Going in favor of the cadets on the far side. Morante has it taken away. On the near wall, be held in by Hudiman. And the cadets will set this up as Morante back to Hudiman. Hudiman walking in along the near wall, looking to center it, and sends it back up top to Kennedy. Kennedy's feet down in front. That's pushed aside. Arondikoy trying to clear the zone. They cannot. And now it does come out. But quickly getting it back is Hudiman. Hudiman finding a man on the far side. That'll be Tanner Smith. 120 remaining on the man advantage. And now back out to center ice this goes. But... Not far enough for Rondekoy to get a change. Dylan, Dylan Carey applying some pressure there. Dylan Carey, a very good skater, tenacious. Not surprised to see him on the penalty kill here. Another big hit from the Cadets. Cadets right now, the bigger team, certainly more physical early in this one. Hunter Hudiman, stick handling almost coast to coast here, dropping it off. The shot save is made by Reeves, and the rebound goes to the far side. Casey Hanrahan letting that go. 47 seconds remaining in the man up. And Aronikoy will fling it down the ice as this PK, so far so good for the Eagles. Pressure from the Cadets in terms of zone possession. Couple of good shots. 30 seconds left. Tanner Smith pushing it up the far side. He gets held up. And it is on side here. One last chance with the man advantage on the far side. Morante. Has it taken away, and Ronikoy doing what they can, getting it back to center ice. Chipping it ahead is number seven, Landon Bryan. Ten seconds remaining in the man up, and bringing it ahead will be Anstead. Shot save made, the rebound goes to the far side. Mason Knight coming up with it. The shot, knocked down in front, back to even strength. As Ronikoy has killed off the penalty, but they're still... Hemmed in in their own zone. Long shot, stick save, rebound clear to the side the last second. Luke Manley letting that one go. And Ronick White now will lift it. No, they won't. Gloved out of the air by Anstead. He'll send it down low. Pass a little bit off. Tommy Holve coming up with it. And finally out of the zone, the Eagles get it. Hilton applying pressure, but we're still scoreless here in the first. Cadets coming off a 3-2 loss to Fairports. This past week, as now the pass a little too strong, but icing will be the call. Fairport, a team with nine seniors opposite this very young cadet team, and a senior member of that team scoring the overtime goal in a really, really good hockey game the other night. Hilton losing 3 2 in overtime. Back on January 3rd, and if uh, you're watching this back, 20 years from now. This is the week that uh, the Bills-Bengals game. We're all concerned about Tamar Hamlin. A lot of us losing sleep this week, but certainly all happy with the results so far here is now Hilton shot, knocked down in front. It's going to be picked up here by Matthew Whalen. Whalen has a little time and space as he will shoot, but that is going to be some good defense on the far side there by Jack Palmer. Nice play by the freshman down there, Jack Palmer. A little bit of line shifting with Ronikoy tonight. Whalen finding his way onto that first line. Nice play down there to get it out. Feet a little too strong, and I thought maybe Hilton could have had a chance to touch it, but they will call the icing. So another icing going against Ronikoy. 11.08 remaining here in the first. Early in this one, not seeing one of the keys. I spoke to Chris Monfaletto, the cadet coach. He talked about zone entry and possession across the blue line. Didn't want to get into a dump and chase sort of mentality. And so far, the cadets, some, some dump in, some, some chasing. Tanner Smith centering pass, and it's chopped out of the air. And then Ranikoit's defense surrounding their goaltender, Joel Reeves. He's been up to the task since that early non-goal. It's not on the scoreboard, so I shouldn't really be pausing there. Yeah, it, it certainly looked like from the angle it did go in, but settling down here. And uh, they're going to put the faceoff back here in the Hilton end as we take another look here. Here's the shot 
real early, 16 seconds in, and that looked like it might have gone. The Rondequoit fifth, though, happy it didn't. Hilton on the break, coming ahead. It'll be number 23, Tanner Smith. Smith getting pressured in the corner. He'll have to give it up. Near side, Cameron Gebo. Feed down low back to Smith. Smith backhanding it out of the air as Hunter Hudiman is out there. Feed going right through. Will this get out of the zone? No, it's held in on the near side. It, nope, they're, they will say it did come out. Puck just out of our camera view. You see a contrast in. This is going to be a theme all night with the age on these teams. Cameron Jebo, the eighth grader in front of the net. Puck slipped through him out to the blue line where the senior captain, Tyson Renty, couldn't quite hold the line. Got to be seeing that quite a bit from both of these teams, young and old, working. Yeah, and we'll see how they come together here. Still got more than a month here of the regular season to play. As we'll have a faceoff coming out. It'll be a late change here for Hilton. And it looks like we have a Hilton player that uh, is going to the dressing room. That'll be number 11, Ryan Fish. Not sure what's up with Ryan Fish. We hope he's okay heading in. He w walked off under his, or skated off under his own power there. He should yeah, hopefully we, see him later. Yeah, if we see him come back to the bench, we will pass that on. As Ryan quite pushing it ahead. Here's a break. Landon Bryan going in. Bryan fires! And the save! is made! Aiden Hill keeping this game scoreless. Aiden Hill standing strong, holding on right there. I think everybody was kind of looking. Did he fall? Did he drop it in? He didn't. Here's another look at it, sir. Nice escape right there. Saw a little space. Hill right up to the task, like you said. And then what I like about that, no rebound, too. It's covered yeah, right up. Yeah. Brian will take the draw as this Rondecoy team, that by far their best opportunity so far. We are in the first. As this will be Velipak. Getting pressured on the wall. Two defenders around him and Hilton. And we'll give it back. And now Rondecoy giving it back as dumping it in will be Aiden Kennedy. Cadets trying to use the four check here as we're seven minutes gone by in the first. On the far side, Villaguerra pushing it ahead. Battle for the puck in the neutral zone. Ronicoit offside, and that allows Hilton an opportunity to scoop up the puck as Anstead. Cross ice feed, broken up. And then a hit. And the whistle as the puck went over the boards and out of play. Tanner Smith, talented sophomore. Big, big kid. He is not a kid who's afraid to use his body. He's a tenacious four checker. Just threw his weight into Dylan Carey. Dylan Carey, an excellent, excellent, highly skilled player. Another young gun here, ninth grader on this round of quick team. Yeah, just again, the youth, the storyline here tonight. As crossing into the zone will be Hudiman. Hudiman, the long shot. And that'll be turned aside by Reeves. Hudiman having a real strong freshman year here, leading the team in scoring. Puck along the near side, and that'll go to the far wall as Tanner Smith gets over there. And Aronikoy trying to break it out. Does come out of the zone. Hilton quickly getting it back as Hudiman. Oh, Hudiman gets hit there. Aronikoy able to hold it in as Smith down low. Centering pass. No, it goes back up top. Long shot deflected, and it goes just wide as Palmer let that one go. And back to center ice as this will be scooped up by Anstead. Hilton doing a good job of getting pucks toward the net from that first 16 seconds in till right there. Throw to the net. Good things can happen. Rondequite using this opportunity to change as the puck in Hilton's end of the ice. As we reach the midway point here of the first. Eagles at center ice. It's Velipek. Now it'll go back into their own end as Taylor Figuera going after it. Now Hilton will use the opportunity to change, trying to catch him. Here comes, and it's quickly broken up as Douglas Velipak was trying to get behind the defense. Good job by Hilton. Good job by Wiza to get back and break that play up. Hilton almost got caught on their change there. Velipak did a real, real, real nice job of sort of jumping into the action. Ronikoy tagging up, and now they're going to try to get the puck back here on the four check as... Clearing attempt here for Hilton and Ronikoy doing what they can as they get the puck back in the zone, dumping it in now to the near corner. 
Battle for the puck. And that'll be Mason Knight, the first year player who gets it out of the zone. But Aronicoy coming right back as that'll be stick handled there by McLaughlin. He'll dump it in. Another change here, keeping fresh skaters out. And now finally, pathway here is that was close to too many men for Aronicoy, but they'll let that go. And there's the puck along the near wall. That's Henry Velipek, number 21 for Arondecoy. And with it now, Patrick Wiza. And Wiza is going to wrap it around to the far side to Trent Letcher. We understand it's his birthday today. As now the feed along the near side, back up. And Arondecoy keeping it in. Filigera taking it to the corner. Filigera is centering pass. It's going to be picked off by, again, in Driscoll. And now Hilton will try the near side to get it out. Lifted and just out of the zone and off to the races. Here come the cadets as Luke Manley turning ahead. Manley shot and that'll be turned aside. Joel Reeves continues to be the story here for Rondekoy as we remain scoreless. Good way to keep the zone there, the cadets. Nice play at the line by Josh Anstead. As that puck in front as Kennedy tried to work it down low and now... Back out to the neutral zone is Palmer. The defenseman will walk it ahead. He'll dump it in. 6-13 and counting. Not a lot of whistles here in the last few minutes. Both teams had scoring opportunities so far. Foot race here. And then coming out and being aggressive, Aiden Hill. I like that play from Aiden Hill. What, a lot of speed from Dylan Carey. And Aiden Hill getting ahead to Tanner Smith. Hill would have had an assist on that, but... It's still Hilton in front. Coming back, the shot from way out. Save, rebound in front, and that'll be cleared out. Tyson Morante letting that one go. Another save by Reeves. And that'll back up. Real, real nice play by the Hilton captain. Reeves up to the challenge here. Again, we referenced that early almost flub, but since then he's been a wall. Aronicoit does sneak in the change. As defensively pushing it ahead is Filigera, but then quickly the cadets take it right back. Casey Hanrahan, number eight, along the wall. Now getting down low will be Smith. Off a skate this goes, and Rondekoit will hold it in. As Morante gets it back, shot knocked down. Rondekoit, ooh, could, could have had numbers there, but Hilton is able to get the puck back, and that'll be pushed ahead. Morante sees the ice really, really well. Found his defenseman back, even back behind his own blue line to reset things for the cadets, and here they are pressuring again. Morante along the near wall will leave it back. Defensively over there is McLaughlin. He's able to thwart off his man, and the pass goes back out. Phil Fiorella will dump it in, and that will be offside against the Cadets with 4.36 remaining here in a scoreless first. Hilton not quite able to clear the zone there. A lot of zone time on that last shift. Good forecheck from the Cadets on that last one. Again, one of the keys Coach Monfaletto talked about is establishing that forecheck, maintaining the zone, carrying into the zone. And Hilton's done that a little bit better in these last few minutes. Gannon Driscoll taking the draw for Hilton. It's Landon Bryant for a Rondecoit. And coming away will be Trent Letcher. Letcher stick handles his way into the Arondecoid zone, trying to take it in deep, but he does not have the numbers. Arondecoid able to take it away. Held in off a skate. And now Arondecoid able to work their way out of the zone. Feet a little too strong. Cadets get it in. Working his way in his Velipek. Shots he made. Covering up Aiden Hill. Back behind the play when Mason Knight got rid of it. Coach Semino up on the bench yelling at the official, thinking maybe there could have been a hook there. I, I, he might have had a case. I don't know if we'll see it here behind the play. Here's the shot. Good smother. Gene, you mentioned it before. Aiden Hill not giving up any rebounds. Faceoff coming up here in the Hilton end. Landon Bryan once again taking it. Rondekoy fires off the back wall. This will go. Palmer, the defenseman in the far corner. One of the keys from Coach Semino was getting pucks to the net, quote, getting our nose dirty, trying to get rebound goals, trying to get a lot of action in front of the net. That's that attempt there on that shot from the point. Manley in the corner. He's going to take it to the high slot, feeds it to the far side. Now back up to Anstead. Anstead fires. That's going to be blocked. Blocked in front. Mm, it'll be cleared there. Good clear, too. Landon Bryan with a block shot. Great pass play there from the Cadets. Good possession in the zone. Once again, 
Mandy, Manley finally Polini. Good pass. And again, the Irondequoit defense collapsing around it. And again, getting it back. And then this time freezing it. No, he playing it on. As uh, Joel Reeves had it and realized I've got some time around me. Gets it to his defense. And Irondequoit will clear the zone. Far side, Dylan Carey trying to get it around his man, Tyson Morante. Carey Morante, that's a fun, fun matchup. That's a very quick, skilled skater from Ranacoit and a very, very, very tough defenseman from the Cadets. Hunter Huddeman along the near wall, looking to dish it off, sends it back up top. Shot purposely off the back wall goes Tyson Morante. Now, odd angle shot turned aside. Tanner Smith letting that one go, and Hilton accidentally knocks it out of the zone. They'll reset. Why is it backing up? Again, nice reset by the Hilton defense backing up. That puck, I don't know what happened there. I think it went off of, uh, somebody on the uh, Hilton bench. They're not going to say, you know, they'll just blow it dead. You know, Faceoff will come outside of the zone. I think if you look at the possession charts for this game, if that, if that exists anywhere, the Cadets right now certainly in control. It's not, zero's on the scoreboard. Rees playing strong. Yeah, uh, for first year player, really good to see as uh, Velipek gets away from his man. Velipek then quickly coming over Casey Hanrahan defensively to swat that to the wall, and Hilton will exit the zone. As bringing it ahead once again will be Tanner Smith. Puck now goes to the wall as Tommy Holveig with a battle. And Ronicoid able to push it down into the Hilton end. Tanner Smith is a kid who will not quit. The kid is relentless. He will continue to fight on that forecheck, even slipping there. He stayed in, still disrupted things. Rondekoit didn't get it out clean. Walner will step off the ice for Rondekoit. And coming ahead will be his number nine counterpart, Morante. Morante in the corner. He'll keep it himself, takes it behind the net. Morante, shot save made by Reeves, and he'll cover up. Real nice play by the Hilton captain. I mentioned a minute or two ago how stout a defenseman he is. Moranti, when he gets going, when he gets those long strides and can go to the net, he will. If he finds that lane, he will take that chance. Here's a look at it. Gannon Driscoll to take the draw here for the Cadets. Cadets battle for the puck in the far corner. As Driscoll centering pass, that will be deflected behind the cage. Hilton keeping it in. Up top, Anstead. His shot goes wide. Mason Knight battling for that puck. Shot goes out in front. And it'll be deflected. Here come the Eagles. Long shot goes wide. Getting down low is Phil Filigera. Henry Velipek coming up with it. Shot goes off the side of the net. Odd bounce down there. That was a scary moment for the Hilton keeper. And in the far side, Trent Letcher has it taken away. Landon Bryan coming up with it. Bryan to the far side. So, Ronicoy applying pressure, but having difficulty getting it in front. Shot, there it is in front, but then quickly stepping in was Mason Knight. Knight going for the block shot that time. That'll be sent wide by Filigera. And now finally covering up as some pressure with just 39 seconds remaining in the period. Brian, and that's a Perenko. That's a real, real nice shift. A lot of pressure. Brian made a couple of real nice plays along the boards. Made one in particular along the half wall to keep possession there. Real nice shot came at the end there. Filigara throwing one at the net. Good pressure in these last 30 to 60 seconds or so here by the Eagles. Samuel Crane, team leader in goals with four, taking the draw. And Ronicoy trying to apply pressure late here in the period as Whalen pushes it around the far side as Pellini back out to center ice as goes. 24 seconds remaining in the period. One last chance here for Ronicoy, but they're not going to get to the puck as Tyson Morante will push it away on the far side. Andrew Pellini out ahead. This goes late opportunity with 14 seconds ahead. Manley going in. Manley to the backhand and swings it through. Couldn't get uh, contact, got in too deep. It is now Arondicoid able to use the wall, push it down, and that will bring us here to the end of a well-played first period. These are young, well-coached teams. And these are two teams, we mentioned it before, that are very familiar with each other. Hilton won early in the season 4-0 and won another game 4-1. to one. Coach Maffaletto mentioned they had to be at their best to beat this Arondicoid team. Both teams were at their best right there, and that's why you see zeros on the scoreboard. What a first. 
We will take a break here as both teams head to the dressing room, make some adjustments as they come out to resurface the ice. After 17 minutes of play, it's Hilton nothing and Rondequoit nothing here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Produced by Varsity Media. Section 5 fans can now watch sectional championship games and productions live or on demand for just $8 per event on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Any event requiring payment on the Section 5 Broadcast Network means the production may include features such as score overlays, graphics, announcers, instant replay, and multiple camera angles. Do you watch a lot of sectional events or consider yourself a super fan? Then consider purchasing a season pass to watch as many events during the sectional season as you'd like. Want to save that production and remember those championship moments forever? Now you can download the entire video for just $20 per event and cherish those moments forever. Are you ready to start watching? Download the Section 5 Broadcast Network app, available on any mobile device or popular TV platforms. Or watch directly from your computer by visiting sectionv.org slash watch. Varsity Media covers every sport at every level from every angle. Game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts, that's complete, first down, and more! Touchdown, Oceanside! Photography, live streaming. You name it, well, Toby, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs. Trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. For the best action shots and the best angles, look no further than Varsity Media. Our experienced photographers capture your athlete's best moments right from field level. Plus, we offer great keepsakes like bobbleheads, posters, plaques, and prints. For more information about Varsity Media's photography services, contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. If you're an event organizer looking for a media company to cover live streaming, action photography, and game video for your event, look no further. Varsity Media travels throughout the Northeast covering weekend tournaments, showcases, and championships. Contact us today to learn about our services and packages at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. Looking for a great way to commemorate this season's sectionals? Section 5 Athletics is excited to work with Mugs and More to offer a variety of apparel options for each sport and each season. Items include graphics specifically developed to feature the sport and year, including items such as hoodies, hats, pants, and more. Apparel for each season is available for a limited time, so don't miss your chance. Visit section5.org slash Mugs and More to see the many options and place your order today. If you're interested in staying involved with the sports you've enjoyed over the years, we may have an opportunity for you. Section 5 Athletics is currently looking for officials for several sports. Serving as a Section 5 official provides a great way to stay active, contribute to the sports you love, and earn money while making your own schedule. Visit section5.org slash officials for more information and to express your interest.
You're watching the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Produced by Varsity Media. Section 5 fans can now watch sectional championship games and productions live or on demand for just $8 per event on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Any event requiring payment on the Section 5 Broadcast Network means the production may include features such as score overlays, graphics, announcers, instant replay, and multiple camera angles. Do you watch a lot of sectional events or consider yourself a super fan? Then consider purchasing a season pass to watch as many events during the sectional season as you'd like. Want to save that production and remember those championship moments forever? Now you can download the entire video for just $20 per event and cherish those moments forever. Are you ready to start watching? Download the Section 5 Broadcast Network app, available on any mobile device or popular TV platforms. Or watch directly from your computer by visiting sectionv.org slash watch. Varsity Media covers every sport at every level from every angle. Game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts, that's complete, first down, and more! Touchdown, Oceanside! Photography, live streaming. You name it, well, Toby, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs. Trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. For the best action shots and the best angles, look no further than Varsity Media. Our experienced photographers capture your athletes' best moments right from field level. Plus, we offer great keepsakes like bobbleheads, posters, plaques, and prints. For more information about Varsity Media's photography services, contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. If you're an event organizer looking for a media company to cover live streaming, action photography, and game video for your event, look no further. Varsity Media travels throughout the Northeast covering weekend tournaments, showcases, and championships. Contact us today to learn about our services and packages at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. Looking for a great way to commemorate this season's sectionals? Section 5 Athletics is excited to work with Mugs and More to offer a variety of apparel options for each sport and each season. Items include graphics specifically developed to feature the sport and year, including items such as hoodies, hats, pants, and more. Apparel for each season is available for a limited time, so don't miss your chance. Visit section5.org slash Mugs and More to see the many options and place your order today. If you're interested in staying involved with the sports you've enjoyed over the years, we may have an opportunity for you. Section 5 Athletics is currently looking for officials for several sports. Serving as a Section 5 official provides a great way to stay active, contribute to the sports you love, and earn money while making your own schedule. Visit section5.org slash officials for more information and to express your interest.
We are ready for the start of the second here tonight from Lakeshore Ice Arena along with Bill Smith. I'm Gene Battaglia. Fun game we have here so far. This has been great back and forth, especially the last few minutes. I think if you look at the scoring chances, Cadets definitely on top. But that last couple of shifts from Aranda Coit, puck possession, winning the four-check battles, winning the battles along the boards. Aranda Coit keeps that up. They're going to punch through. They will. Cadets' key maybe is to just kind of keep on keeping on. They've had a lot of zone possession. They've had a lot of offensive time. Keep getting shots. They're out shooting them unofficially, 11-5 to at this point. But both teams have a strategy. Let's see where they go. Hilton will dump it in. Of course, the team switching sides. As on the far wall, Ronda Coit looking for a pathway out. They're not able to get it out. And now that will go into the Hilton bench. So the face-off face -off should remain here in the Ronda Coit end. Want to say hey to everybody out there that is watching and listening. Gene, we've got fans all over the country watching this. I oh, really? That, I hear there are some cadet fans in Las Vegas, Nevada. Super fan Byron's tuning in. Hope everybody out there is enjoying their night. Nice. We really appreciate your support here. Uh, Section 5 Hockey here on the Varsity Media Sports Network and all the Hilton fans watching as well as around Decoit as stick handling his way out. Dylan Carey has had a nice game so far. Carey trying to apply pressure, but... Tyson Morante on the far side. His feed goes off a skate. Carry a player along with Landon Bryan, Alex McLaughlin. Some of these freshmen that were playing last year as eighth graders have really learned and are more aware of their surroundings, as Coach Amino said. Getting better every day. Blocked in front. Good play by Arondicoy. That was number 12, Alexander McLaughlin, right on cue with the block shot, clearing the zone. Ronda Coit sneaking in a change here as they will reset in their own end. And now Hilton will do the same here. A little more than a minute gone by here in the second. Still looking for our first tally here tonight as the shot blocked in front. And Ronda Coit back to center ice. Although we've looked at that replay a bunch of times. And, Bill, I think you and I thought uh, Hilton should have had one there. I think this whole game is different if that puck is called a goal. It certainly looked like it, but it was waved off. In Kennedy's shot goes wide. Now the next shot knocked down by Filigera. Filigera's clearing attempt using the glass. Out it is comes, and here comes Landon Bryan. Bryan going in, fires and scores! Landon Bryan, the first-year player, and Aranda Coit strikes first. It's 1-0. Landon Bryan, skilled freshman. We were just talking about this kid and the growth from eighth grade. A whole mess of these freshmen played last year as 8th graders. Got a lot of time on the varsity squad as an 8th grade varsity hockey player. Landon Bryan in that group, and he punches through here for the first one tonight. Bryan also had a similar play there in the first. This time, picking the corner, and Jack Palmer, the defenseman, just a half step late on that, getting over, and Aronikoy getting through. Here's the announcement. And, and that's one of these growing freshmen who've gotten a lot of experience. And who is he set up by but the junior captain, Phil Aguera. And almost on cue, we were just talking about that missed goal from early in the first. This game is very different if that goal counts. And now, one nothing ironically. And for Brian, that's going to be his second of the season. Two minutes gone by here. And really, you could see it for Ronnikoy the way they finished up the first, how they were applying pressure. As this will be Smith, and he's going to take matters into his own hands. Smith, looking to dish it off. It deflects to the far side where Hudiman would go back after it. Smith in a battle behind the net. Wins that battle. Back in, in front. Nobody home. And out of the zone this goes. Another foot race. Two. He'll be coming up. Wiza got to it. I... A little surprised the arm went in the air there. Um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm seeing a little stunned disbelief from the Hilton bench. You're going to get wise up for hooking. You. I. Okay. He got he got the stick up. He certainly played the stick maybe for a split second more than the official likes. The Hilton bench is, I think, just kind of surprised. You're not seeing a lot of anger over there. Well, you've seen hooks that have been worse. 
This will be the uh, first power play of the evening for Aronicoy. As two of Aronicoy players bump into one another, they'll reset in their own end as Tommy Holve. Aronicoy right now just one power play goal on the season. Looking to bank that second one right here. A 2-0 lead right here would be big. Carey, and that'll be swatted away. Good play there by Luke Manley on the PK. And Ronikoy will finally dump it in here. 126 remaining here with a man advantage. Far side, Ronikoy on the wall. Backhanding it up top where Holve sends it on the near side. Cross ice feed. Shot. And that goes through. 110 remaining with a man advantage. Holve off a skate and an opportunity as Manley getting behind the defense. Luke Manley shorthanded and the penalty coming up. Question is, is it just a penalty or will they call a penalty shot? No, they will just call the hooking and Manley is down on the play and the Aronicoy players are calling immediately for the trainers to come over. Holvey back checking fiercely, gets his stick up in there. Here's the play. Manley collects it here. Shove from behind. I don't want to say I'm glad at anything, but I'm kind of glad that he went in knees first. On, on, the, on the initial contact, it looked like he might have gone in upper body. Yeah, as uh, Luke Manley now going down. Certainly hope the Hilton forward is, is, is all right. And There's as we're taking a look at the Arondicoit goal, the applause here for Manley as he is able to get to his feet and get hard into the wall. And this will uh, mean we have some open ice here, four on four. I that that moment right there, that's high school sports right there. You got Manley the junior shaken up, gets a hug from the junior captain, one of the two junior captains, Phil Aguera from the other squad. You know, and, and for Holvey, that's a penalty you have to take. You you, you got to go in there, break it up. Four and four, a little more ice for a minute, and then the Cadets will have a one-minute power play. McLaughlin on defense. He finds a man that goes over to the far side, and again, with this open ice, three players in that vicinity for Ronico, including Smith, and Smith will win the battle. Tanner Smith now will flick it out, but coming back is Landon Bryan, the goal scorer here. 33 seconds remaining in the four on four, and then it'll be an abbreviated power play for... Hilton as puck goes behind the net. Smith again coming up with it. Smith getting it over to Hudiman. And now working his way ahead. Hanrahan and he got in and then he goes hard into the wall. Popping back up. 12 seconds remaining here and then Hilton will go on the power play. Shot to the far side. Taking a look around and surveying options as Crane. Crane pushing it ahead. Feet just a little bit behind Brian. And now Hilton on their second power play of the night. One minute remaining in that. And you can hear the Irondequoit goaltender, Joel Reeves, banging his stick to alert the team of the situation. Good job of getting that puck deep by Hudiman. Came loose. McLaughlin defensively will get it out. And good move working his way out to Velipek. Velipek is able to get a shot off. Easily turned aside there by Aiden Hill. 30 seconds remaining here in the Hilton power play. So one last rush as they'll set it up. Hudiman gains the zone. Byers sends it wide. Hilton able to hold it in on the far wall. 18 seconds remaining on the power play. Back up top, long shot, stick save, rebounding goal! Hilton on the power play. It's now one to one. Hilton puts the big body captain. Aiden Kennedy gets the goal. Right in front of the net, causing some traffic, getting in the way. That goal wasn't scored by Tyson Moranti, but he was right there with it as Kennedy buries it here. Here's a look at it. You see Moranti skating through. Kennedy pots it back of the net. 1-1. We got a good game here, Gene. Yeah, if you're Joel Reeves, there's not much you can do if you have two cadets right in front there. So Hilton answering. 
as in his own end will be McLaughlin who will lift it out. Here's the announcement. Kennedy's third of the year. That's also his third power play goal. Kennedy, the power play specialist there for the cadets. So for Reeves, just leaving the rebound right on the doorstep off that long shot by Anstead. Something amiss right at the drop of the puck. Yeah, they're going to reset the clock here. I think that's what they're looking at. But a quick answer from the cadets. Great goal from Brian for Arondecoit. We mentioned coming out of the first period, Hilton certainly outnumbering in chances. Cadets answer right back. We've had a very even back and forth since the waning minutes of the first right up through these first five and a half here of the second period. And no rebound given up by Reeves. We'll do this all again as it took three seconds off the clock. Joel Reeves got to gotta get some artwork on that mask there. Is now White is, it, it's very minimalist. <laughs> I guess that, that could be the style. My day job does involve uh, the visual arts, so I'll throw that at you if you need it. There is uh, the cadets. They're going to walk it ahead. They've got numbers. Stick handling his way in. Shot just going wide by Hodeman. What a nice play by Hunter Hodeman, but just could not cash in. A lot of skill. Stick handling around the defenseman there. Got himself in a great position to take a shot. Hanrahan behind the net. Centering pass for Hudeman, but the defense of Verondicoy breaking that up. And now it's Palmer feeding across ice in the one-time whiff there by Hudeman. Hudeman, great shift right here. Long shot, rebound in front. Still being batted around, and Verondicoy will scoop it up. They do not have the numbers. As now bringing it down the ice and gaining the zone will be Waylon and his shot. And the save is made. So one of the things Coach Semino talked about getting, and I, I think we've referenced it before, was pucks to the net, battling for rebounds, getting our noses dirty, sort of the ugly goal mentality. Aiden Hill has not given up a rebound of note. He is smothering everything that he's finding. Face-off won by Arondicoy. This will be headed by Filigera. We'll send it to the far corner. Coming up with it, though, will be Luke Manley, who's back on the ice, so that's good to see. To the corner. And ahead, Manley. Manley keeping possession of the puck. Now it gets away from him, but sitting in front, pushed to the side. Ronda Coy trying to get it out, but the back check by Manley holds him up momentarily. And now back into the zone, this will go. Real nice defensive play on Manley's push there from Levi Powell, the ninth grader. Hilton keeping it in. Shot knocked down in front. The rebound sitting there. And Rondequite still cannot get clear it as Levi Powell was trying to get to it. Hilton applying pressure here as the momentum going in their direction. And Rondequite does just enough to get it out towards center ice where Luke Manley will get it, send it over to the near wall. Manley did a real nice job of backing up to the blue line when... Walner now... Hands it off to Velipek. Velipek, though, getting pressured by Wiza. Was well, mid-sentence there. Moranti had pinched in from the defensive spot. Manley, a great job of getting back. Landon Bryan, who has the goal tonight for Ron Nicoy. Bryan does not have numbers. Looking to dish it off. Centering pass. Hilton's defense, but it still held in the zone. Still in front, but now finally a Ron Nicoy. We'll see the puck go out of the zone here. Is coming ahead. Kennedy's shot that goes in on net. Hilton will change. Arondekoy trying to catch him in that change. Could not do it. Battle for the puck at center ice. Brian was there for the outlet pass. Trying to catch Hilton off guard. Couldn't quite hang on. As Brian centers it right through the blue paint that went. On the near wall trying to hold it in will be Holve. And the defenseman McLaughlin will chip it ahead. 
1-1, our score remains. We're past the midway point of this game. Van Dusen, the 10th grader, using his body there in front. Made a nice play on the attempt there. Mason Knight. Overskated the puck, but had the wherewithal to drop it for his man. That'll be tapped in by Trent Letcher. Well, third line on the ice right now for the Cadets. And Ronda Coit here through the neutral zone is pushing it ahead. Henry Velipak, his long shot, and able to see that was Aiden Hill. Trent Letcher getting held up. Awfully close to interference there. They'll let that go. As coming ahead, the opportunity going in. The shot and the goal! Samuel Crane with his team leading fifth, and Ronda Coit retakes the lead. Junior captain Sam Crane, one of the best offensive players on this Arondecoit team. One of their leaders, leads by example, leads on the score sheet, puts them ahead there 2-1. to one. Nice play when he comes through the defender right here. Gets his body between the defender and the puck, plants it. Nice play by the captain from Arondecoit, Sam Crane. So the Eagles now lead 2-1. Here's the call. Assisted from number 16, Tyler Filgera. That's Crane from Filgera. And a goal by Arondecoy giving up. That's Tanner Smith for Hilton. His fifth of the season quickly. We are tied once again. Hilton answers right away. Previously it was about 90 seconds later here. It's about, it's not nine seconds. That's hyperbole. But right away the next shift. Tanner Smith buries one. Here's a look at it. Smith off the wall, bang. Nice play, great wrist shot over Reeves. If you like that, don't waste any time. Let the shot go. We're gonna go with nine seconds between the goals, pretty close. It was, I, 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 I thought I was maybe exaggerating there and that will be a penalty. Yeah, Smith going up high there, contact to the head. The question is, is it going to be two or five? So, unassisted on that goal. On the Irondequoit goal, Filigera picking up his second assist of the evening. I think you're right. The official's talking here about what the penalty will be. They're going to just give him an elbowing call. It appears. Something that officials are being very mindful of this season. You know, this is a physical game. This is a hard, hard, high contact game. They're keeping it safe. A play like that. Smith did not go in with bad intentions, but he got his elbow in the wrong place. Yeah, there's uh, tensions or not, you can't uh, go up high like that. Is now this will be the second power play of the evening. Both of them come in this period here for Arondecoy. Puck going over the wall so we'll go get another puck and they'll put the face off here outside of the Hilton zone. In the minute or so of the first power play around the did get a chance or two but actually drew a penalty when the cadets got a shorthanded chance. Nice clear by Tyson Morante as this will be Arondequoit in his own end. Holve spinning away from a defender. Love the forecheck from Hudeman there. Stick handling into the zone. This is Dylan Carey. Carey gets in too deep, centering it out in front. Nobody home. And Aronicoy doing a good job stepping in. Is number 16, Tyler Filigera. But now it'll come out of the zone. Hahnemann taking a little time off the clock. Will bring it into the zone. Dropping it back. And Aronicoy will take it back. 115 remaining here in the Aronicoy power play. 2-2 our score. All the goals coming here in the second. Great penalty killing shift here from Hudeman. Pressure in the offensive zone. Down a man. Oh, we get the offside call. It was offside by a mile there. And, and I have to say, Hudeman's pressure back behind the opposite blue line might have forced a pass at the wrong moment. Ronacoit not getting set through the neutral zone. Great shift by the freshman, Hunter Hudeman. Draw will come outside of the zone. And it'll be won by Aronicoid is scooping it in. Landon Bryan. Bryan, and that will go over the glass and into the front row. 
sort of stop and start choppy little bit of this power play right here. Still a minute left for Rondecoit to get themselves set up, get some movement, find a shot through to Aiden Hill. Aiden Hill, a goaltender that Coach Semino really respects. Coach Semino, a former goaltender himself, works with a lot of local goalies here around Monroe County. Section 5 has worked with Aiden in the past. Knows his talents. Aiden Hill, the junior, one of the better goalies in all of Section 5. Coach Semino, very, a lot of respect for the Hilton keeper. But right now, we'd certainly love to see his, uh, his boys in red, white, and yellow. Blue, white, and yellow, I should say. And I teach color. The uh, much lighter note here, the Ronicoy Eagle mascot has his top off, the, the the hat off. I thought that was against the rule. Your mascot, you can't uh, take a break like that. Uh, if, if this was Disney, I think he'd be losing a job or yeah. something. <laughs> As, uh, it'll be a Ronicoy closing seconds. 29 seconds here. They'll get one last rush in. Well played game so far. Glad you're with us here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. The turnover on the outlet pass. As the shot going wide, but more importantly, just killing time. That was Andrew Polini stepping up with the interception. On a play on a penalty killing four check from Luke Manley. Young man we saw go down before. has come back healthy and playing well. Penalty has expired, so Ronicoit 0 for 2 on the power play is... Now, will that be called icing? Yes, it will, as uh, Landon Bryan did not touch it on the red line. And the faceoff coming back here to the Ronicoid end. Hilton, a real good job of pressuring at their offensive end. Great penalty kill on that last one. Ronicoid couldn't quite get themselves moving, couldn't quite get their power play in order. 0 for 2 at this point. Along the wall. And we'll drop this over once again. Filigera, I won't say quietly, he does have two assists on both goals, but having a real, real good game. Physical, not afraid of contact, skating well with the puck, clearly setting things up, two assists. Junior captain playing well. Tanner Smith winning the draw. And Aronicoit with an opportunity as Wolner. Walner in way offside there. Filigera did yeah. a real nice job along the boards. Dodged a check, got the puck out, found Walner. Walner, not sh quite sure why he pulled up at the blue line there. That had the looks of a, a, a solid break if they had kept that going. Something to learn at, watching it on film, I'm sure. This young Eagle team, both teams very young, is now the shot. Save made the rebound, and then pawing it is Joel Reeves. As that is uh, Hudiman letting that one fly. Something Coach Semino talked about. This is a, a team that's they're still young. It's it's it's. I mean, it's easy to say in high school sports, but again, lots of eighth graders last year, lots of ninth graders this year. But this is a team that has been committed from the off season, getting work in every week through the summer months, through the fall. To this point here, he's got a group of guys that he just loves, and this is a hard-working team. He's getting better every day. Record doesn't show a lot of number success, but they are getting better. Ryan Coy going in. The shot just goes wide as that's Whalen once again, but Aiden Hill able to get his body on it. Held in by the Eagles. A long shot. Rebound put out in front of Hill. Another save as it's clear to the side as Tanner Smith. Still not out of the zone as Arondekoy finally pushing it ahead. Now it's Hudiman working one-on-one, -on -one, falling down. And that's a good play there by the defenseman Tommy Holvey. Hudiman just losing an edge. Might have had a chance to come in with some space. Real Hudiman. nice play at the other end by Dylan Carey to create the chance that Arondekoy had. In front, Smith and then swatted away at the last second. Rebound pushed over the top of the crossbar. Hilton applying pressure, and Smith is calling off the ice. That's going to allow an opportunity for Rondekoy to clear the zone. 3.30 remaining here in a tie game in the second. 2-2. Two -two. Hanrahan with a shot through some traffic. Kind of sailed over the net. Good opportunity. As Manley will intercept. Manley dishing it off. A shot, save, rebound, tapped out of the air, and it just goes wide. Manley behind the net getting tied up. Polini almost had one there, knocking it out of the air. Shot near side, knocked down, and rebound clear to the side. Another save made by Joel Reeves. 
Cadets, a lot of pressure here. And taking it behind his own cage will be Dylan Carey. Not out of the zone. Intercepted. What is the call? Hit out of the air with okay, a high, high stick. Okay, high stick. Okay. So they will have the faceoff coming back. Lots of pressure from the Cadets. Here's the shot from Kennedy. And then there's the tip by Pellini. Almost puts it home. That stick, that puck, that contact was under the crossbar. That would have been a goal. Sustained pressure from the cadets there on that last shift. Aronicoit, though, face off at the other end. See if they can take advantage of this one. Landon Bryan taking the draw. It'll be Palmer sweeping it around to the opposite side. Kennedy didn't like what was ahead of him. Now the long pass stepping up and breaking this play up. The defenseman coming away. It's a two-on-one the other direction. Aronicoit's defense, though, getting back, and it's, it's a nice recovery by Filigera. Kennedy with a nice play, but Filigera equally up to the task. Nachi Perenko, first time we've mentioned his name tonight, and that just goes wide. There's the third line on the ice for Ronicoy, creating a little bit of pressure. As behind the net, this will go. Velipek. Velipek backhanding it in front, and that'll be picked off by Tyson Morente. We're down to two minutes remaining here in the second. Slowly up the ice as Andrew Pellini dumps it in. And behind his own net, this is Levi Powell, number three, pushing it up. Long shot, and that'll be gloved by Joel Reeves. No rebound given up. Reeves seeing the puck really, really well tonight. A couple times through traffic, maybe the benefactor of some, some off-the-mark shots, but when he's got a lane, the cadets have a lane, he's seeing it right in, doing a real good job of covering Smith winning the draw, so Top Gun's on the ice right now here for the Cadets. Looking to retake the lead here. I guess the correct thing is they've never had the lead, I should say. Haven't had it yet. No, haven't had the lead. It's been Ronicoy 1-0, Hilton answering, Ronicoy 2-1, and a quick answer by Smith. Here's an opportunity is going in, shot in front, and another save is made by Reeves. What a play coming along the boards by Casey Hanrahan. Hilton's talented eighth grader did a real, real good job there. Good breakout. Oh, way offside as trying to hold up was Walner. And it's a good play by the Hilton defense. And some adjustment here that uh, Rondequoit has had to make. Here's another look at that last opportunity. Hanrahan looking for his man in front there. Velopek back this way did a real nice job of backing up at the blue line to put his body between himself and the Hilton defender. Walner, though, as you mentioned, had a steam, couldn't put the brakes on. That made that offside. Our director tonight, Joel Balthazer. Maybe to wear his winter cap here. These, uh, these ice rinks are cold, sir. Actually, it can't complain with our winner so far here in Rochester, at least. As now bringing it ahead. Here's Huddeman. Huddeman, as we're under a minute to go in the period, Huddeman has it swatted away. As That's number 12, McLaughlin, coming through. Behind the net. And that'll be knocked down. Pushed to the far side. Lifted down the ice. And is it on net? It's just going to go wide. Forcing the icing. Once again, the Cadets getting possession down low. Creating from behind the goal. Almost with a, with a, with a chance there. They didn't get a shot on goal through there. But again, sustained forechecking pressure. Possession in the offensive zone. And again, we just mentioned the Cats haven't had a lead yet. They certainly have had a lot of chances. Luke Manley taking the draw. That'll be backhanded around in the near side. And coming away with it behind the net. 15 seconds remaining. Maybe time for a rush here if the Cadets can get it loose. Lifted and back to center ice. Opportunity is Brian going in. Brian, four seconds remaining. And it'll be a save made, and the horn will sound. But we have Landon Brian, and he's able to get up here. Physical game so far here is uh, 
Bill got a little bit of everything here tonight. Really glad to see Landon Bryan on his feet. He's still shaking that one off. A couple cadets checking on him there with his teammates. I've, I, I think I mentioned it before. I've really, really... I, I, I work in education. I'm connected to these districts. I love the sportsmanship. It's, it's something that's just... It, it, it speaks to the greatness of high school sports. So I hope he's feeling good. Love the camaraderie there. I'm also loving this 2-2 game. Yeah, this is uh, well played here tonight. Two programs... Uh, that are certainly putting it all out here tonight as we head to the third. Now, we'll step aside. We'll be back with you right before the beginning of the third as we resurface the ice. 2-2 our score here tonight on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Produced by Varsity Media. Section 5 fans can now watch sectional championship games and productions live or on demand for just $8 per event on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Any event requiring payment on the Section 5 Broadcast Network means the production may include features such as score overlays, graphics, announcers, instant replay, and multiple camera angles. Do you watch a lot of sectional events or consider yourself a super fan? Then consider purchasing a season pass to watch as many events during the sectional season as you'd like. Want to save that production and remember those championship moments forever? Now you can download the entire video for just $20 per event and cherish those moments forever. Are you ready to start watching? Download the Section 5 Broadcast Network app, available on any mobile device or popular TV platforms or watch directly from your computer by visiting sectionv.org slash watch. Varsity Media covers every sport at every level from every angle. Game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts. That's complete, first down and more! Touchdown Oceanside! Photography, live streaming. You name it, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs. Trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. For the best action shots and the best angles, look no further than Varsity Media. Our experienced photographers capture your athletes' best moments right from field level. Plus, we offer great keepsakes like bobbleheads, posters, plaques, and prints. For more information about Varsity Media's photography services, contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. If you're an event organizer looking for a media company to cover live streaming, action photography, and game video for your event, look no further. Varsity Media travels throughout the Northeast covering weekend tournaments, showcases, and championships. Contact us today to learn about our services and packages at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. Looking for a great way to commemorate this season's sectionals? Section 5 Athletics is excited to work with Mugs and More to offer a variety of apparel options for each sport and each season. Items include graphics specifically developed to feature the sport and year, including items such as hoodies, hats, pants, and more. Apparel for each season is available for a limited time, so don't miss your chance. Visit section5.org slash Mugs and More to see the many options and place your order today. If you're interested in staying involved with the sports you've enjoyed over the years, we may have an opportunity for you. Section 5 Athletics is currently looking for officials for several sports. Serving as a Section 5 official provides a great way to stay active, contribute to the sports you love, and earn money while making your own schedule. Visit section5.org slash officials for more information and to express your interest.
You're watching the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Produced by Varsity Media. Section 5 fans can now watch sectional championship games and productions live or on demand for just $8 per event on the Section 5 Broadcast Network. Any event requiring payment on the Section 5 Broadcast Network means the production may include features such as score overlays, graphics, announcers, instant replay, and multiple camera angles. Do you watch a lot of sectional events or consider yourself a super fan? Then consider purchasing a season pass to watch as many events during the sectional season as you'd like. Want to save that production and remember those championship moments forever? Now you can download the entire video for just $20 per event and cherish those moments forever. Are you ready to start watching? Download the Section 5 Broadcast Network app, available on any mobile device or popular TV platforms. Or watch directly from your computer by visiting sectionv.org slash watch. Varsity Media covers every sport at every level from every angle. Game film, recruiting videos, highlight videos, sports casts. That's complete, first down and more! Touchdown Oceanside! Photography, live streaming. You name it, well, Toby, we offer it. Don't leave your video needs to amateurs. Trust the pros. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. For the best action shots and the best angles, look no further than Varsity Media. Our experienced photographers capture your athlete's best moments right from field level. Plus, we offer great keepsakes like bobbleheads, posters, plaques, and prints. For more information about Varsity Media's photography services, contact us at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. If you're an event organizer looking for a media company to cover live streaming, action photography, and game video for your event, look no further. Varsity Media travels throughout the Northeast covering weekend tournaments, showcases, and championships. Contact us today to learn about our services and packages at 516-403-2050 or visit us online at varsitymedia.net. Looking for a great way to commemorate this season's sectionals? Section 5 Athletics is excited to work with Mugs and More to offer a variety of apparel options for each sport and each season. Items include graphics specifically developed to feature the sport and year, including items such as hoodies, hats, pants, and more. Apparel for each season is available for a limited time, so don't miss your chance. Visit section5.org slash Mugs and More to see the many options and place your order today. If you're interested in staying involved with the sports you've enjoyed over the years, we may have an opportunity for you. Section 5 Athletics is currently looking for officials for several sports. Serving as a Section 5 official provides a great way to stay active, contribute to the sports you love, and earn money while making your own schedule. Visit section5.org slash officials for more information and to express your interest.
Welcome back here to the Lakeshore Ice Arena. Gene Battaglia with Bill Smith. 2-2 two -two is our score. And Ronicoy looking for W number one on the season. Their veterans are stepping up here tonight. They are really up to the task. I, 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 we mentioned it in the pregame or the first period. It took Hilton coach Monfaletto talked about how the, the two wins that Hilton has over Ronicoy this season. And again, it's tough beating a team three times in one year. Two wins. Hilton had to play their best to beat this team, and this shows you why. This Aronico team is fierce. They're relentless. Don't let that winless record say much. This is a team that will not quit. And I think you're going to see that in spades here in the third period. 17 minutes going up on the board as we begin the third. Aronico players banging the ice as we're underway here. As off the wall, this will go to the far side as put on the brakes and Aronico. Dylan Carey can't get it out. Just over the line this will go. And looking around here will be Filigera, who's got two assists tonight. He's getting pressured, needs some help there. And the help comes along the way. As Carey sends it up along the near wall to Whalen, and it goes in a little too deep, and it'll result in an icing on the play. The captains from Aronicoit, Filigera and Crane, both involved in the scoring Two assists from Filigera, a goal from Crane. As you see, Coach Chris Monfaletto from the Cadets getting his team ready here in this third period. On the Hilton side, Smith wearing the A, his fifth goal, tied for the lead. The big guns from these teams coming through tonight. Aiden Kennedy with the other goal tonight for Hilton. And Hilton has yet to lead in this game as it's Aronicoit looking for a pathway out here. But again, they're getting pressured as Manley comes up with it. Manley off a skate, and here's Aronicoit to bring it out. Getting hit along the wall and then falling down is Henry Velipek. So good forecheck here by Hilton as Eagles try this again. Velipek gaining the zone, trying to work it in down low. And having to back off here will be Landon Bryan. Perhaps wisely so. Bryan now sees an opportunity. Bryan gets to the corner. Odd angle shot, and that's going to rattle all the way down to center ice. Looking for his second there. Tough, tough angle. Ooh, nice stick angling by Velipek, but then he has it taken away. A lot of red there swarming around as Mason Knight would come up with it. And then that is taken away. It's a real good shift by this Irondequoit line right here. As Hilton coming up with it, Driscoll getting hit, and everybody looking around for a call. They're not going to get no one. A lot, of, a lot of the amateur officials uh, had that one. Yep. As uh, we have the whistle. Faceoff coming back here to the Irondequoit end. Real nice shift from Henry Velipek in that last line, that last shift for Aronicoy. A lot of pressure, maybe not strong ch shot chances, but they certainly kept position there as you saw Coach Semino here. There's Velipek. Good physical check at center ice. That's the one that the, the Hilton amateur officials were looking for a call. I, I, Bill, I disagree. That's interference with a capital I. Puck was nowhere near there. So they let they officials miss one on that. Here's the turnover. The shot goes off the the wall as now on the near side backhand in front and that'll be picked up by Filigera Hanrahan and Smith right there, a couple of real nice plays as that's going to be pushed ahead by Wolner and on the wall coming up with it Josh, and we get another whistle. Josh Anstead, a couple of real nice plays along the boards right in front of our position here. Anstead, a, a, a very solid, dependable player who, quote from coach Chris Monfaletto, has answered the bell this season. This is a young man that played last year as a freshman, growing as a player, as a kid, here as a 10th grader playing really well. Face off here in the Hilton end. Rondequoit fans making noise to our left, trying to get their team... Going here is a potential 2 on 1 as Manley will bring it into the zone. Manley going ahead and that's broken up. The one back for a Rondequite making that happen. Number six, Tommy Holde. I love how unselfish Polini was there. Maybe wanted to take that shot himself. 
Colve now will dump it in and around there is Morente. Has stick handling his way through the neutral zone. Be McLaughlin, the defenseman, bringing it ahead. Quick shot from the turnaround. Stick save is made by Aiden Hill. The far side, a clearing attempt. And again, it's a Rondecoy gathering up at center ice as Tommy Holve pushes it ahead. Now Hilton going to the far side and trying to get down low is Tanner Smith. Smith can make things happen. Certainly he's looking for some help here as it changes behind the play. Smith backhanding it. That'll be knocked down and Driscoll is over there. And Rondecoy dangerously taking it in front of his own net, but out of the zone this will go. Another great, great shift there down low for Smith, creating from behind the Rondecoy net. Change for Rondecoy gives Hilton an opportunity to bring this ahead. As Anstead with a head of steam. Shot, glove save, rebound put out in front, but nobody home for Hilton. Knight almost got there. That's yeah, coming ahead. It's going to be Landon Bryan. Bryan, cross ice feed. Shot and a save is made by Hill. Aiden Hill keeping this a tie game. Bryan's pass was saucy. That was a heck of a pass. Great save by Aiden Hill. Folks, if you like hockey, this is your game right here. Watch this. What a pass. What a save by Aiden Hill. Landon Bryan as Palmer will push it to the far side and Hilton will have to go chase this again as Hill will leave it there. Fiorella in his own end pushing it ahead. And now it'll be Manley. Manley crossing into the neutral zone. Does not have the numbers and has it swatted away. Gets it back and it deflects behind the net. Had Hanrahan in front. Puck will rattle behind the net as it'll be Holve hinging it over to the far side. Centering pass, but again, good defense intercepted. Quick shot to the goal! And Hilton takes the first lead of the night. That's Luke Manley with his fifth of the season. A great play to keep the zone by Casey Hanrahan, the skilled eighth grader. He made a great, great stop. That puck trying to clear it out. The, the Eagles were... Finds its way to Manley, who buries it. 3-2 Cadets. Here's another look at it. Puck comes free right there. Hanrahan with the skate. Manley, bang. 3-2 Cadets. It's those unsettled situations, and recognize that Manley letting that one rip, and you're absolutely right. You have a big gold star to Casey Hanrahan, the eighth grader on that. And now Rondecoy. We've had games where we've had Plays where quick answers. Here's the announcement. Yeah. From Phil Fiorella. Yeah, that was uh, that, that was not Fiorella, but it's okay. Fiorella having a very solid defensive game, credited with the assist there. That play though happens. That goal happens because of Casey Hanrahan. Yeah, Hanrahan should get the primary assist on that. So we've had quick, quick answers from the cadets on both of the Iranicoi goals. Let's see what Eagles can bring right here. We've got a lot of time left. One goal game. Puck will rattle in behind the net, and getting over there will be Wiza. Iranicoi holding it in. Shot will be bouncing now to the near corner. 11-11 remaining. Moranti so smooth behind the net. Very calm. Sees the Forcha coming right here. Three guys bearing down. Finds his defensive partner and off go the cadets. Polini leaving it. Smith now will wrap it around over as Moranti. Pathway out and bringing it ahead. This will be number 16, Polini. And Polini has it taken away. Ronicoy in the far side. McLaughlin, the defenseman. Still Ronicoy getting it back. Hilton on the near wall as Smith. He'll backhand it down low, and now his line will hit the ripcord. 
change in progress here for the Cadets as they all step out on the ice here. Holby with a couple of real nice defensive plays there. First on Pellini, and then another to sort of just disrupt. Nicely done by the sophomore defenseman from the Eagles. As Palmer pinches, now he'll get back. Holding it in along the wall is Palmer. Under 10 minutes to go here tonight as making the save will be Reeves in front and then somehow getting over to the last second. Tommy Holveig with the deflection, deflection. It goes out of play. Another good play from the sophomore defenseman. Holvey heading off right now. That was a dynamite shift. Here's a look at that last one. Selling out. Cadets with a little sustained pressure right now holding that one goal advantage. Driscoll taking the draw for the Cadets. It goes to the wall. A little out of our view is over there is Mason Knight, number four. Veronica White able to chip it ahead. Now it's a foot race as Anstead chasing after it. He's able to get to it first. Anstead, a nice job of getting that puck to the boards. No icing on this play. It's going to be waved off as behind the net and then playing it safe and the pressure there by Mason Knight the first year forward up against Levi Powell the freshman for the defenseman you got two ninth graders down there battling our theme all night we've we've hit it again and again it's just the reality with these two teams having such young rosters but right there freshman against freshman Driscoll to take the draw once again for the cadets as the shot knocked down Ronicoy bringing it ahead. No, Palmer breaking it up. And this will be Velipak along the near side. Quick shot that will go wide. Knocked down and then back in and over. That was Parsons letting that one go. Parsons did a real nice job of initiating that whole sequence. Got the puck through the, the neutral zone with some skill. Good forecheck. Parsons going after it once again and is able to kick it ahead. Ronicoy comes up with it. Toward the net this goes. The ability to be pushed aside. In front, the backhand, not much wood on it. And again to the far corner. So Velipek in a battle for that puck. Ronicoy looking to tie this up. First time they've trailed this evening. Walner Parsons of Velipek here. This is a real nice shift. Hilton coming ahead is Manley. Shot. Save made the rebound. Put back. What a second save. Wow. What a glove from the Irondequoit freshman. That was incredible. Kennedy thought he had his second of the night. I think everyone in this rink thought he had this, his second of the night. Here it is again. Kennedy tees it up, has got so much net, and that glove snaps. What a save. And that will go off the netting, the shot by Hanrahan. That the atmosphere here tonight has been really good. Both sides, parents, fans, students, friends, everybody. It's been real good. There was a, a almost stunned quiet on that save. <laughs> the Arundacoit faithful were all sort of holding their breath. Fiorella pushes it down low. The centering pass. Oh, it trickles through. No, they say it's in. They're going to give credit on the goal. Oh, wow. Wait a second here. I So there's almost a makeup mentality here from that early one. We're going to get a look at it here and see who maybe will get credit for it. Puck is down low, goes off of a defenseman. We can't I don't How, know. Well, uh, physics, I don't know. All right, you know what? It may have gone in because watch watch the butt of the stick. Yep. Oh, you might be right. Yep. So that is a goal, and that is some good officiating. As they're talking it over. Tim and Spencer with some good cam work over there, fellas. I think it's Tanner Smith in the corner here. Yep, the butt of the stick, it gets shoved out. That is a good goal. So... They're going to look this over, but they can't look at our replay. <laughs> so, 
But can you imagine if they take this off the board? Because Hilton had that goal in the first that was clearly in that they waved off. But right now they keep it up on the board. It, it, they're coming to, to the faceoff at center ice. So who do we have credit to? Smith on that? I'm the, I, I think that was Smith in the corner. And you've got half of this place unhappy, half of this place very pleased. So it's Fiorella. Fiorella at the 8.59 mark. He was the one in the corner just centering it. So he gets his first goal at the high school level. Certainly he didn't get that from his father, Mark. Kidding. <laughs> That's now behind the net this goes. I'm sure he had something to do with it. As uh, it feeding it in front. Here's the puck coming ahead now. If you're a Rondecoy, you, you have to start taking chances here, Bill. Down by I, two. You, you have to. And it, Reeves has played really well. So, I mean, they can afford to take a chance or two here. Shot. Weak side. It goes in. Casey Hanrahan. And now the floodgates are open. It's 5-2 Hilton. Hanrahan comes in off the wall. Sharp angle as he comes in off the left wing. And the skilled eighth grader slides one in near post. I think it's 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 that last goal has got to have Joel Reeves just in a, 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 in a in a in a tough spot. Here's a look at it to the half wall, outside stick, tight angle, shoulder, short post, and it's in. As we will have the puck dropped at center ice, Enrahan's fourth. Yeah, a nice third period for Hanrahan, setting up the go-ahead goal. To Casey Hanrahan from Tyson Moranti and Josh Anstead. Mostly to give the Anstead the secondary Hanrahan assist. From Moranti and Anstead at the 950 mark. Mason Knight pushing it ahead, has it knocked away. Long shot, and that will be gloved by Joel Reeves. Hilton has scored the last four unanswered here now to take a 5-2 lead. As we're past the midway point of the third, and I think you know, there's 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 different there's different opinions on momentum in sports, but uh, Uncle Mo right now is I think in, in in Hilton's corner. Cadets looking for their fifth win of the season. They win another draw as Anstead. Behind the cage, this will go. Shot goes off the side of the net by Polini. And bringing it ahead will be Whalen. Whalen will opt to play it to the corner here as the keeper Hill will push that along the far wall. Going after will be Anstead. Anstead getting pressured. And swiping it away will be Driscoll. You know, one thing we're not going to see here at all is this Arondecoy team back down. Here's an opportunity, and Hill making the save. On, no uh, rebound. On, on cue, you see a real nice pinching play by the, the Arondecoy for, forward. This is an Arondecoy team. Coach Amino talked about how, you know, teams that go through difficult stretches can, can you know, you can, you can put your head down. And this is not a team that ever feels sorry for itself. This is a team that keeps working and keeps getting better. And in these last six minutes right here, whether they close the gap or it stays 5-2, this, this Eagle team is going to show no quit. Hilton and Ronicoy in a battle. Here's Manley coming up with it. He's got Hudiman coming down the center of the ice. Manley in the corner has a little time. We'll send it back up top where... Wiza sends it ahead, save made, the rebound being poked away, and finally it blows dead, and that's the rule. When you lose sight of the puck, the play goes dead, so it did pop free at the end, but the faceoff coming up here, and they run it quite out. Very late, but an understandable whistle there. Good pressure, though, staying on the gas. You know, we just talked about Aronicoy with no quit. The cadets aren't going to back down either. They're not going to sit on that lead. Manley to take the draw.
Pushes it over to the far side and Hodeman coming up with it. Still in the zone to the near wall. Now Rondecoy flipping it out. Gloved out of the air by Morante who will send it back in. On the far side, Tyson Walner, number nine. Take it away, big hit as Wiza gets drill. And we have an offside call. Not sure what the call is from the Hilton faithful. But I think the uh, <laughs> the red the red and black clad fans over here are, uh, loving, yeah, loving know, things right now. Yeah, you want to make sure you still a lot of time here. As that'll be knocked out of the air, they're not going to say hi. Stick on that as Pelini will push it in behind the net. Hanrahan applying a good check there leads to an opportunity. Back up top, drop feed shot knocked down in front by the Rondecoy defense. And then turning it up the ice will be Whalen. Great job of clearing that puck out of there. That rebound found its way right into the slot, and Reeves had sort of slashed over to his right. There was a gaping cage right there. The defense did a great job of clearing that out. To the far side, this will go where Walner gets to it, backhanding in front, but nobody there other than red jerseys as Hanrahan able to swipe it to the side. Coming up with it, gloved out of the air. That was number two, Jack Palmer with the block. Shot will go wide, and now it will be McLaughlin to pinch here a little bit as they got to start taking some chances, the Rondecoy. Puck coming out in front. Now another shot, another block shot. That'll be Smith with the block, and out of the zone this will go. That was a nice play by Pellini. Just bang it out of there. Didn't even ice it. Smith oh. lost an edge there, and trying to locate the puck will be McLaughlin, who will walk it up the ice. He'll use the wall. 3.40 remaining here tonight. Off the back wall, this will go. Coach Muffaletto talked about how his team also, there hasn't been any letdowns. They lost a just hard-fought battle against a good Fairport team just a couple of days ago in overtime. You know, other teams, you might, you might have letdowns. And he said something that he, he, he says in the locker room in practice quite a bit. Where we are today is not where we'll be tomorrow. And that speaks true to this week. They're sitting here with a 5-2 lead. This is a team that could have been real down after that loss from Fair against Fairport the other day. They're not showing it here. Long way to go. It's a funny sport. Things can change. As Ronicoy trying to sidestep a check there. Tommy Holve going in. And pushing it to the side. It's Gannon Driscoll, number 15. Gannon with a good play down there. I think we're starting to see some tired legs out there now. Is now coming to the near side will be Brian. He's got one tonight. Landon Brian gets checked at the last second. Tyson Morante. Nice little bump there. Is this is a nice, nice play getting back. I mean, you expect no less from a, a very talented senior defenseman. Eagles at center ice. Number 10, Parsons has it knocked away. Parsons will push it back. Change on the ice as Jack Sultan, his first shift tonight, number 24. Also seeing Matt Sidoti out there for, I think, the first time. It's a good uh, to get some different younger players working in his hand step, bringing it ahead. He has it knocked away. Palmer will dump it in as Sultan will chase after it. Salton hard into the wall, misses his check. As ahead, this will go. Swatted away by Anstead. Real. Smith turning it up the ice. Real nice outlet pass to Velipak from Filigera. Rondick White offside. They got to wait. And they'll dump it in. Still some hitting going on here. As that puck will result in an icing with 118 remaining. I think another sign of this, the, the leadership from both of these teams being what they are. Sam Crane, one of the two captains here alongside Phil Aguera, you know They're down three goals here. There's only 90 seconds left, under 90 seconds left. And he's forechecking. He's, he's battling down low. 
Coach Maffaletto talked about how his captain, Tyson Moranti, is so good with this younger roster. Tyson was the only freshman on the team three years ago. Yeah. And now he is the only senior on the team this year. Timeout. Yeah, timeout on the ice. One eighteen remaining here. Coach Semino is real good with these moments. These are these are two really coach, well-coached teams. And, and Coach Semino, the Eagles are down three. There's a minute 18 to play. He's going to put his team in a headspace to battle for the next one. He, he's not going to get them too far ahead of themselves. He's going to set them up here with the best chance to score the next goal. And these are kids that have worked hard. We've talked about how they had their great offseason program. He's very proud. They're going to set up something here and come with a spark. Mike Semino, gosh, if you know anything about youth hockey, so many years around here, Lakeshore and everything. So, yeah, he is a, he, he is a great teacher, as is Coach Monfaletto, certainly of Hilton. Now, I think with this puck deep in the Hilton zone, Ronacoit certainly here is going to do everything they can to win this draw, and we are going to see... The goalie head to the bench. We got a sixth attacker out there. Yeah, so Joel Reeves. Empty net opportunity coming up here with 118 remaining. And, you know, why not? Give it a shot here is Sam Crane, who has one of the goals tonight to take the draw. And that will go behind the net. Rondekoy trying to get to it. Intercepted. Shot. Pad save made. Rebound. Kicked out. Still held in. And let's sending it ahead is Holvig. Behind the net, Brian trying to get to it. And coming up with it first will be number nine, Tyson Morante. Foot race here, but getting to it first will be Holve, and Holve will turn it up the ice. Everybody for Hilden looking that empty net, and then knocking it down will be Dylan Carey. Nice play by Carey there. Chasing after it. And, and the goal, uh, attempt at the goalie goal. <laughs> it's Hayden Hill. He was thinking about it. 33 seconds remaining. And, and yeah. we're going to have uh, we're gonna have the rare icing call when you have the empty net. So now Joel Reeves will have to come back between the pipes. You don't see that in high school hockey a lot. But there was the, there was the space there and the time. There was the opportunity. <laughs> The junior goalie would have made a little bit of, uh, I think, Section 5 history with that one. Now, we could have been on Sports Center Top 10 with that, perhaps. As well, we've had a, a Top 10 broadcast. That would just be the cherry. Well, I appreciate that as uh, it's going to be uh, 20 seconds remaining. Ronnie gathering it up. That's... Philip Guerra, who's had an excellent game tonight, the two assists. Penalty, and it's going to be on Smith. Smith went up high with that, so seven seconds. Yeah, you don't want to see things kind of getting out of control here, and officials wisely kind of putting a wrap on this. There's another one where Smith definitely didn't go in there with bad intentions. He just got himself up a little high. I think that's a call you have to make. I'm not, I'm not suggesting otherwise. So fair or not, this will be a uh, seven-second power play <laughs> for Rodekoy, which will <laughs> skew their numbers a little bit. But a, a chance, and they've pulled the goalie again. They're going to look to get better here. Quick shot, the deflection attempt, letting that one go was Landon Bryan looking for his second. 2-1, and Hilton gets win number five on the season. An exciting 5-2 win here over the Rodekoy Eagles. I... I I don't, I don't want to dismiss anything from the cadets. I love the last sequence from the Eagles, and that speaks to how this team is growing. Down three, a minute and change, even seven seconds. They're setting up a play. They're looking to just make something happen. Again, everything is with the eye of just getting better and growing as a team. But to the flip side, 5-2 win from the cadets. Quite a, r a run there in the third period. As you mentioned, dating back to that, that, that second goal in the second period, four unanswered gives the cadets the win, 5-2. So the goals tonight, Hanrahan getting his fourth, Manley getting his fifth, Tanner Smith getting a goal, 
I mean, it's, uh, it certainly was an all-around effort here. As, uh, I don't know if you give a player the game here, so to speak, which is a nice balance attack here tonight. Manley gets the game winner. Manley had gone off for a brief spell, getting that check into the boards. I think from that moment when he came back, he played a really strong game at both ends of the ice. I would, I would want to maybe give the unofficial Bill Smith player of the game to <laughs> Luke Manley. I'll keep, that, I'll keep that one copyrighted, folks. There we go. So, uh, once again, and, and Bill, your final thoughts here tonight as uh, this is a, a young Hilton team, young LaRon DeCoy team, and a game that uh, was in question until midway through the third. We saw a couple of weird bounces early and then late. I think those almost, you know, karma almost balances. One went one around DeCoy's way, one went Hilton's way. We saw two teams here that even right now, as we're just looking out here, these kids are shaking hands and hugging. Two teams that really respect each other, know each other well. This was the third matchup already. It's only January 6th. A well-fought battle, a clean hockey game, and a strong win by the Hilton Cadets. As uh, some players got to take pictures afterward, and certainly uh, the youth hockey roots run deep. Well, Bill, it was a pleasure doing a game with you, and uh, let's do this again sometime. As uh, We want to thank you for watching in the broadcast. Our team leader, of course, Ben Turchin, our director tonight, the great Joel Balthazer. Tim and Spencer, shooting the cameras. Thank you, boys. From my partner, Bill Smith, my name is Gene Battaglia. Hilton winning tonight 5-2. to two. Have a good night from everyone here at the Varsity Media Sports Network.